Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm about to puke. Yeah, well, welcome to Afghanistan. We were loading up, ready to go, and then it kind of hit me. I was like, oh, shit, we're, we're about to go, you know? I wasn't doing it to test my ability. I, I, I was doing it to kind of soldier, make sure the men came home, because uh, I was told as a corporal, you, you train them up and you bring them home. When I started getting intel on our 2011-2012 tour, you basically got the impression it was going to be the Wild West. So we knew long before we even landed in country that we were going into a hot area. We were prepared to walk into a shit storm. The first firefight that I was in, just bullets were flying around me everywhere. Just off the ground as I'm running. And that day, it you know, really hit me that, you know what, my ass can go down at any time. Understanding that people are trying to take your life. You know, I'll never forget being pinned down for the first time. Holy crap, these dudes are trying to kill me. Lehan was doing a uh, supply drop-off. They were escorting the uh, supply company. They had made it, dropped off the supply, turned around, and they were headed back to, to their outpost. Lehan's platoon had been hit by an ID. It was Lehan's truck. They've met a vacuum to Bagram, and that's all the information he had at the time. An hour later, he calls us back down there. He says, uh, Lehan died, you know, he didn't make it. And, you know, I turned around, went back to, went back to my, my hooch by myself, and I just fucking, you know, broke down. She hit the fan roughly about 25 to 35 minutes within the patrol. I'm not sure what's gonna happen, but something's absolutely gonna kick off, and they were watching us. It was quiet at first, and then we just started getting mad chatter. Just just all kinds of shit was coming off the, the net. We started traversing up this goat path to get to the corn, and then we were probably straight line distance, 500 meters from Objective Baker, and, and out of nowhere, we started taking fire. And then they start taking RPG fire. We got hit. We just heard that shh. And then it all went quiet. I was counting them. Boom, boom, boom. It was just ridiculous. You know, all I remember really is the, the RPGs coming in and, and it blew me over the cliff face and I got hung up in this cedar tree. I woke up as they were pulling me um, behind cover and I just remember looking down like, oh, oh shit. You know, rocks are still kicking up, dirt's kicking up. Uh, one guy that's got a bicep cut in half, two knocked out. Uh, the other one's got stuff in his forearm. And I mean, I think we had 12 guys get hurt in that firefight because they got the jump on us. I mean, first thing, boom, 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 four RPGs right off the bat. Once the 16s came back on station, we dropped our first JDAM a little less than 300 meters from us, so it was super danger close. And, you know, we coordinated with uh, Captain Brown and uh, set up a immediate troops in contact, danger close, and uh, we ended up dropping three, three danger close bombs. And then I started sure. getting a head count and uh, realized that I was, I was missing a guy. And, and so uh, Alex and I kind of ventured back down the hill. And we had figured out that we were, you know, missing Sergeant Prince and that he was down, he had fallen off the mountain. And Captain Brown was like, we're going to get him. And you know, Prince was killed immediately. It took about six of us rotating out to uh, to kind of uh, carry him out. I would have laid down my life a hundred times to make sure that we were able to recover him and bring him home with us. After many years, you know, you, you come to the realization that no matter what you did in that situation on the ground, there wouldn't have been a different outcome. When we went in there, they had our number. You know, we were surrounded immediately. And I, I had multiple conversations with God during that whole event. You get down there, uh, and then the reality of it sets in, and you're just like, I'm not gonna tell his wife. David and myself and our partner, Bert Bedrosian, we have a company called Strong Eagle Media. 
We want to document the entire war on terror. The young sergeant, Aaron Harrell, who brought the story to us, he didn't want the story to be about him. He wanted it to be about his two fallen comrades. I knew that it, it was going to take a certain amount of toll on him. And I felt like it was going to be for the right reasons. And I felt like that it would help at the end. And I felt like that it would make it stronger. But I didn't know. All I had to go on was a faith and, 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 and a passion that we were doing the right things. And I think that at the end of the day, what you see now is those things have happened. But that was a tough road. His commitment was so strong in his motivation on why he was doing it instantly made me gravitate to this young NCO leader. When Sergeant Harrell contacted me, he said, hey Ray, um, would you be interested in sharing your footage and being a part of this? I was like, well, you know, let me think about it. It's, it's you know, both the best and worst days of my life, getting hurt losing the guys that we lost. I don't know if I want to relive that. Somebody wants to put <laughs> all your personal, most private memories out in public for the world to see. It's scary, for one. But after talking, you know, to David about these different families that have been affected by the movie that he made with the Warner Sense and how it helped him, it kind of opened me up, you know, so then I got thinking, you know what, this would be an opportunity for us to, you know, honor Prince, honor Lehan, you know, for their kids. First of all, I think I was pretty much against this movie from the start, but then there was a turning point and I, and I, and I offered 100% support to this film. The way the production company put this together, it's just unbelievable. Being able to key in on the brotherhood of our men, being able to key in on how much we cared and love about each other. Well, I guess what sets this film apart from any other one is that it's told through the eyes of the soldier. It's their cameras. They're wearing the cameras. They're holding the cameras. You really do get a peek behind the curtain because it's the raw, authentic reaction to everything that happens to them. Citizen Soldier is just an unbelievable true story of a modern day band of brothers and sisters from a National Guard unit that deployed to the front lines and what they captured on film, both in their experience in combat, their experience with taking care of each other, is really one of the most amazing heartfelt films that you could ever see about real heroes in real circumstances, all with the common goal of trying to get each other home. We want to take you on a journey where you felt like you ran down the hill with them. You felt like you were on the radio when the call came in that one of your brothers or sisters is down. And that's why the way we treat these in tone is no politics. It's about ordinary men and women and what they're doing for each other and the people that are there to protect. The Afghani civilians, the kids, you know, the people that need help and want help. What's your assessment on this print? I like it. I'm having fun. Right. Each one of us have left something in that country, up on that mountain. A little piece of us will never come home. Some people are able to just be numb to the fact that they're exposed to death and carnage and things of that nature. And a lot of people don't realize that when I got back, I spent almost a year and a half um, in therapy. War is, is difficult. It's a difficult thing to put away. It's a difficult trigger to turn off. The suicide statistic is 22 a day, plus or minus, and you never want to get that phone call, and I've had those. So I take it very personally when a guy calls or reaches out to me at a moment's notice at the drop of a dime. I mean, I'll drive wherever I've got to drive to to be there for a guy. They feel like that they now have hope, and their lives have now been given um, maybe another chance at, at trying to put some of those demons behind them. That's, that's why this was so important, to get through all those years. And the films become a living, breathing thing that honor the fallen heroes, that bring closure to the folks that were there, that they've branded digital medicine. Being a part of the film, seeing the film, reconnecting with the guys, um, it has definitely been digital medicine. You know, now that, now that it's out there, I can sit back and say, he was right. And the hope is, and it seems to be going that way, is that these films give them a voice to say, look, this is what I went through. This is what I experienced. And I hope that you can understand a little bit better of, of the challenges that I face. And but what it's done for my family and, and what it could do for my son, it's better for, 
for someone to see it than to hear it. Because, you know, when they hear it from you, you sound like a, a monster. You know, but when they see it in something like put together like this, you look like a man just, you know, looking out for his buddies. For all the, the 14 that we lost from the 45th, it was a way to memorialize, you know, all of them. But specifically for, uh, for Damon and Michael, their kids are gonna see that we loved their dads like they were our brothers. For me, I, want, I just wanna celebrate their lives, um, their legacy, something that their children can see and their children's children can see. Through making these films and creating that family connection with the unit and with the family members, it, it's changed my life. One of the chaplains for the 45th watched the movie with about 20 Gold Star families and maybe 200 soldiers. In the 90 minutes it took for them to watch the film, he had never seen anything help his people so much in such a short period of time. We were forced to kind of deal with it um, and, and, and make something positive out of it. And I think we have. This film has, well, I mean, it saved me. Thank you for the time and the memories you spent with us. Working on these films um, has certainly made me appreciate being an American much more. And what stands out to me is that when you see in this movie on multiple occasions, when the bullets are flying or an IED explodes, how they react. And they run towards the action. And you can't not watch their stories and not be moved by it. It can be somewhat of a healing for the family and the unit, but also I think it can be a uniting for the country because everybody can get behind something that we can't argue about. Because these men and women are the best of the best. This is what makes our country unique. This is what makes us special. Be absolutely proud of your Oklahoma Guard that, that you've got a, a group of individuals that you know were called and, and went and, and did what they've done and they've done it on multiple occasions. As a soldier going to a foreign country, you're basically fighting against corrupt gangs. Like, you're, you're the tip of the spear. You're the ones going out talking to the civilians. You're, you're making, you know, you're negotiating with the village elders, trying to give them food, give them water. These poor kids, these, these poor people, what's the enemy doing to them? They're showing up and stealing that food and water we just gave them, stealing the fuel we just gave them. They're keeping their kids from going to school. You know, what of the country does it as great as we do it? And there's not one. At the end of the day, we are still the greatest country in the world. And it's films like Citizen Soldier that show our, our guardsmen, our militia, taking the fight to the enemy and trying to help support our active duty brothers in carrying the pride of America on our shoulders. Citizen Soldiers are everywhere, and they're literally your next door neighbor. Um, and they've made a commitment to try to balance this hectic thing called life, civilian world, and military world, which are three different things in its own, almost. This isn't just a Hollywood film. We didn't have embedded reporters. You know, it's, it's none of that stuff. These are just some men in my platoon that are authorized to wear helmet cameras. That's it. It turned into some sort of flick that it's going to save someone's life. I don't know whose life it's gonna save. It's gonna save someone's life, and I'm telling you, it's probably already saved my life.